In a scenario. I'm recording again. Recording the this playthrough. I've uploaded I've uploaded the yest my um, the playthrough from Darkseed yesterday's stream on my YouTube channel. You find a link on, on down on the description. There's a link to my YouTube channel. Voices again. Ah, good morning. Mr. Mr. Gwensky, is it not? We have been expecting you. I'm Emil Kruba, the manager. I have a letter here which uh, was left with your arrival. As you can see, it's a different letter. Dear Mr. Gwensky, thank you for your recent letter. The event scribed in it, you are, I would agree there is a possibility that a criminal offense may have been committed. As you may know, as you may or may not be aware, however, there are circumstances peculiar to this country which complicate the investigation of any possible offense involving a Greek citizen. I would still be happy to discuss the matter with you now and look forward to seeing you when you arrive in Alexandria. I can only be found in my office at the El Cujo Police Station. Look forward to seeing you there as soon after you arrive as committee. Respectfully, Colin Cameron. you can see, where is the Gurung police station? Only two or three minutes walk for me, Mr. Gretzky. It's easy to find, but I'll show you. And then you can mark it on your map. Anything for me, Emil? Is there anything else for you at the moment? There is nothing else for you. Okay. So, let's save police. And let's go directly to the police station. Camera. Hello, Mr. Gretzky. Welcome to Alexandria. I sent from your letter that you are here on behalf of a client who's sold shares in a worthless company. Who has sold, who has sold shares in a worthless company. You've been trying to trace who was behind the frauds. Is that correct? That's right. Managed to trace the holding company, uh, Elitis Import Export Company. Yes, it seems to be run by one Constantine Elitis. It certainly was, but you have a problem taking action against him now. He died over a year ago. The company is now run by his wife, Ariad Dan Elitis. And but you probably bleed ignorance, and legally you can't touch her. In addition to that, as I mentioned in my letter. Both of them are Greek and covered by capitulation. Oh, I'm sorry. You might not be as familiar with them as I have be, have to be. There were legal privileges and immunities granted to foreign countries to encourage trade when Egypt was part of the Ottoman Empire. They were amended after the war. But it still means that I can't arrest a Greek subject without a representative of the Greek consul being present. Sorry, I was simply swallowing the rest of my mint. However, there may still be a way to ensure that justice is done. Let me explain. 
A lot of unusually fine papyrus manuscripts have been turning up on the black market. The museum are worried because they think a major archaeological site is being looted. Is being looted. The material may even come from the Alexandrian Library. If these were discovered, there would be an unholy row. And with the political situation here as sensitive as it is, I can't risk that. I need some who I can trust, but who isn't connected with the authorities here, to pose as a buyer of manuscripts. And that is where you come in, Mr. Gretzky, because I have reason to believe that, that, will, that Mrs. Elitis is the source of the papyri. So, are you willing to help me? Splendid. Now, I'll explain how we go about it. As I said, our first problem with the elitist woman, although I think I can get around it, is the effect of the remaining capitulations. The problem, to be honest with you, is that we may have not rooted out all the corruption in force. Yes, a few years back in 1917, the Mahmur Zapt, or head of the secret police, a man called Philippides, was sentenced to five years in jail for gross corruption. When the rot starts at the top, it usually goes all the way down. Russell Pasha has rooted a lot of it out since then, but I don't want to take any chances. I need someone who can pose convincingly as a buyer of manuscripts, but who isn't connected with the police in any way. All I'd like to do is contact our suspect, and if you offer any antiques, Pretend to agree. So, are you willing to help? Now I explain it or not. You know about the import export company, but you also runs a cafe called the Gardens of Paradise. It's easy enough to find, mark on tourist maps. So, where would you prefer to make contact with her? Uh, at her office or in the cafe? Okay, let's go with the office. Mm, might be better. Meet her in her office? Not a bad idea at all. You could pretend you wanted to send back some antiques you already bought. That would give her a perfect opportunity to raise the subject. So you prefer the office to the cafe? It's the office. Alright. Tell her that tell her they need to ship something bulky back to the USA. A statue or something. If she doesn't take the bait, you may have to mention manuscripts yourself. But try to be casual about it. Now, do you remember what I said about capitulations? Yes, I remember. I wish I could say that all consular officials gave us their prompt, enthusiastic support. But many of them see a posting year as the first step to a prosperous retirement. Contact the chase of Mrs. Elite is being tipped off. So I'll just arrange to meet one of them for cocktails. And you arrange to meet her in the bar of your hotel. Yes, you're at the Savoy Palace, aren't you? She'll probably suggest that as a meeting place anyway. But if not, Get her to agree to it. Now, she'll want to see the color of your money at some point, but don't worry about that. I'll make a resume with cooks to provide you with a banker's draft. Thomas Cook and Sons. Their office is almost opposite your hotel. I'll let them know you're, com you're coming. Ask to have the draft delivered to the hotel just before you're due to meet. That way, they can tell me the date and time. Anyway, good luck, Mr. Gretzky. I'll arrange for one of my men to take you back to your hotel now. By the way, don't contact me directly again. You might get to hear of it. Goodbye for now. Thank you for your help. Okay. Hey, anything from email? I remember Mr. Gretzky. Okay. Let's save. Shouldn't be too hard, but fair camera on litis. Uh, good day. How may I help you? I've bought some antiques, which are too bulky to take back to the USA in my luggage. I need to arrange for them to be shipped back. Could you do that? The name is Gretzky. By the way, Mr. Joe. There will be no problem. I'll see what chips have space available. I'll let you know the likely cost. Where are you staying in Alexandria? I'm at the Savoy Palace Hotel. Hope you were pleased with what you bought. 
chanting and chants and mentioned men scripts. Yeah, I was very pleased indeed. But I also had hoped to buy some good quality papyrus manuscripts. While I was here, manuscripts. They happen to be had in the city, if you know where to look. I could ask around for you if you like. I'm sorry. What did you say you were saying? Oh yes, Savoy Palace. Goodbye then, Mr. Gretzky. I'll contact you as soon as I have some news. Uh, I'm just doing this. Oh, it's got Prophet Daniel instead of Pastor Daniel. I see that some of the dialogues re is the same. Excuse me, Mr. Gretzky. Yes, I mentioned for you. Drive earlier this morning. Dear Mr. Gretzky, I'm delighted to be able to tell you so soon that I believe I have found a truly remarkable item which we, I think will be delighted. Not knowing your schedule, I have, arranged, I have arranged to be in the Subway Palace Bar at 11 this morning and look forward to seeing you there. Ariane and Lucas. I'm sorry, Mr. Gretzky, but it, it isn't working at the moment. It is most unsatisfactory. They say they cannot get the part to repair it. But how does it look? The Swiss managed hotel where the clock does not work. You'll find that the clock in a bar works perfectly, however. Just after 10. So I went to 11. Mr. Gretzky, I had to see you. I have a tremendous opportunity. I was speaking to a business colleague earlier, a member of the Coptic community here. It seems that one of his cousins has run up substantial gambling debts. His uncle must sell a family heirloom to him. The voice grace to the family. The heirloom is a case crow, and from the sound of it, worth far more than he is asking. Although his cousin's debt must be phenomenal, since he wants 500 Egyptian pounds. And for that, not. That seems fair enough. Now, I assume that you have a me local bank. We will need to move fast. We may change its mind or sell someone else. If you can't produce a banker's draft or letter of credit, I'll meet you back here at 6 o'clock this evening. Okay. Yes, sir. Now can I do to help you? I'd like a letter of credit, please. Certainly, sir. Oh, are you a gentleman to be told to expect? By Bimbashi Cameron? Yes, that's right. What amount should that should it be for? Five hundred pounds. Since you are staying at the Savoy Bells Hotel, I can arrange for a draft to be sent there. When would you like it? So before six this evening. Get on I'll get on right away, sir. Save again, just in case. Save often when playing. Well, not playing any game with a save feature. Save often. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, here's the idea. When playing any game with a save feature, save often, especially graphic adventures. Of 
far too early. I'll come back to it before 6. Hello, Mr. Gretzky. I think you will like what I have for you. I have certainly never seen it it's like before. Did you manage to arrange the money? I have arranged a letter of credit through Thomas Cook and Son. They were going to deliver it to the hotel. I'll just go and see if it has arrived. I'll wait here while you go again. That manager of Brokong's office brought this over for you early, Mr. Gretzky. I was going to tell you that a lady was waiting in the bar, but you already know that. of credit, maybe exchange for all major banks and some money so 500 pounds too. Let's go leave it here. Thank you, Emil. You got it? Good. As I am sure you are aware, to take this out of the country legally, I will need a permit from the authorities in Cairo. Because of that, I don't want you to give me the money now. I'm used to arranging such things, and it would be my pleasure to organize it. It also guarantees that the artifact is genuine. While I will confirm to the seller that you have the money, when the permit arrives, I will give you this, and you will give me the money. My us is draft for a moment. Let's see Thank you. I will let you have it back in a minute. And then I had better take the somewhere safe. But while I check the letter of credit, look at it. Have you ever seen any it's like before? I know it's uh, it looks very similar, but then the second half is different. Trust me. Just one moment. Are we adding elitis? I'm placing you under arrest. The gentleman behind your companion there, the representative of the Great Consul, who has agreed to surrender you into custody of the Egyptian authorities. You are not obliged to say anything, but anything that you do say will be taken down and may be given in evidence against you. Really, Cameron? If you run out of brothels and gambling dance, great. You are making a grave mistake, I warn you. The other car will be here in, in a minute. Cat? Take her to the station, I'll question her later. Yes, sir. I'll better look after uh, better look after that letter of credit. Can you let me have it, Mr. Gretzky? Thank you. Right, we better see what we got here. I've arranged for it to be examined by Professor Stone at the museum. Why don't you come along as well? Splendid. Let's get over there right away then. This is Mr. Gretzky, Professor, who has been involved in our investigations. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Gretzky. Well then, Professor, what do you make of it? The case is an extraordinary mixture of elements. Does that occur, of course? That does occur, of course. The catacombs are the prime example. But there's nothing like these that I know of. The workmanship is superb. But the trouble with gold leaf is that it doesn't tarnish. It could have been made yesterday, and probably was. If it is a fake, it's like the scroll is to... Scroll? Yes, there really was a scroll inside there. I've done some preliminary humidifying and unrolled the first few feet. Well, well, shall we take a look at it? Before I start examining the scroll, take a look at the case. I'll just turn it around for you so that you can see it properly. I see what you, I see. You see what I mean? Yeah, you were expected to hold a sacred animal. What is a sacred animal? Certain animals were sacred to particular gods. The cat to Bastet, for instance, the ibis to Tot, and they were often mummified as offerings. Whether or not the case is genuine, or belongs with the scroll, I suggest we take a look at it that now. It's in Greek. 
or not one of your scripts. Are you familiar with any of these, Mr. Gretzky? Hmm, I can't make it a tale of it, I'm afraid. Well, we actually have the title, which is most unusual. The ends of scrolls were subject to the most wear, and are often missing. It's Biblion Karyukeion. Biblion, of course, is book. The award could be for staff carried by heralds, or the winged staff of Hermes, which was run by snakes. A loose translation might be Book of the Serpent Staff. Staff. I'll see what sense I can make of this, but you'll need to be patient. He dedicated to Ptolemy Fiscan, the seventh Ptolemy, also called Evergetes, or well doer, not to be confused with the first Evergetes, who extended the library and built Serapion. The Library of Alexandria, the greatest in the ancient world. Any guide to Alexandria will tell you about it. The writer promises to reveal great secrets and powerful magic. Most of it so far, however, concerns the story of one Meme Fercaptan and his descendants. The name means beautiful is the bowl of Ptah, one of the very oldest sun gods. In the, in the afterlife, he opened the mouth of the deceased to release their soul. The scroll would describe Memeferbukapton. I swear I don't know how to pronounce this word, this name. As the only son, Meme. Let's call him Meme. That's it. Has there have been someone of that name? There may be some of that name. The records of some dynasties are far from complete, but it certainly does appear in one of the demotic tales. Folk stories from the Greco Roman era. They were written in a late form of Egyptian, known as demotic. And one particularly concerns a folk hero called Setmi Kawas. He actually existed. By the time of the demotic tales, he was a legendary hero. A bit like Robin Hood. But the real man lived more than 3,000 years ago. He was a son of the great Ramesses II, an high priest of Ptah at Memphis. According to the scroll, Meme received a vision from the god Thoth, one of the greatest Egyptian gods, a moon god, inventor of writing and god of the calendar. His name in Egyptian is Tehuti, literally the measurer. The vision led Meme to a city of serpents, in the land of the dead, in the midst of the Sea of Coptos. I don't recognize the name at all. The land of the dead was the western desert. The Sea of Coptos may be a name for part of it, or a magical location. There inside a series of boxes of iron, then bronze, then hood, then ivory, then ivory, then silver, and finally of gold, guarded by an endless serpent. That might mean immortal. He found the book which Thoth wrote with his own hand. Its full title is The Book Which Governed the Return of the Stars. That much is clear. The rest is written in very ornate and obscure language. That's usually the case with magical and alchemical texts. The key secrets were passed on by word of mouth. Well, we can expect that to happen. Can we, Mr. Gretzky? Can you make any sense of the rest? I think so. A lot can be guessed from the context. It seems that he studied the wisdom of the people of the city, and forgive me, but here I'm afraid the text is only too clear. Orgiastic rites of worship took place. He brought his wife to the city, so that his people might father children on her. At some point, he killed the serpent which guarded the book, stole the book, and used one of the spells in it to imprison the inhabitants. After that, he talks of his daughters, guarding some secret knowledge, till the stars are right and the sons lived in company of men, when the blood of their fathers showed in them. Why was the city called City of Serpents? Because its people were serpents. The idea of hybrid monsters, a human, have animal, is common in Egyptian religion and myth. And maybe not just there. You came in the SS Dasi, Mr. Gretzky. And shall I tell Professor what happened when he talked? Yes, tell him. Passengers, a Turkish citizen, was coming down the gangplank when he was stabbed by an Arab, who was then shot by a policeman. You might say that sort of thing happens here every day, but there are disturbing features. The eyewitnesses were almost hysterical. And 
babbled something about the Arab turning to a snake. When I look at the body, I could see what had upset them. Dr. Morrison carried out the autopsy on the Arab and I asked him about the scaly skin. Slate purple eyes and widow, needle teeth. But it just muttered about something about skin diseases and birth defects. The same sort of things probably gave rise to this story in the first place. Back to what you were saying, Professor. Are there actually any magic spells in the, in the scroll? It mentions three. The first one is summoning. Um, the user must call upon the most sacred name of Tot. The second is a spell of binding. The ancient Egyptians believed that words had magic powers and had shown a thing could make it happen. The enemy of the caster shall become bound as the words of the spell are bound to the scroll. If their spell is one of the true sight or divination, it uses the needle of gold and the spittle of serpents, but doesn't say how. A gold well, I'll be that darn cunning. Back in 1918, when an officer stationed in Cairo, a captain king, was found semi-conscious on a bench in the Epskian Gardens. There was an obvious sign of injury, but he seemed to be drugged. When he was spoken to, he would say it was, she scratched my eye with a golden needle and gave me second sight. He stayed in that, he stayed in that state for several weeks. And then he became feverish and delirious and died. But that was all he would say. The strangest thing was, when they carried out an autopsy, there was a scratch in the corner of one eye. We never got to the bottom of the affair. The only clue we had was that King was one for the ladies, and he had been seen with a beautiful young Arab woman. She was wearing a veil, though, and it's ordered by someone just from their eyes. The telephone. That will probably be for me. I told them I could be rich here in an emergency. What? Who? How long ago? Any witnesses? All right. I'm on my way. I must excuse me, I'm afraid. Something bearing on this case has come up all elsewhere. I'll try to get back. But if not, I'll be in touch with you tomorrow, Professor. Oh, of course, Cameron. I'll carry on here for a while. And try to decide whether this is genuine or not. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gretzky. An extraordinary mixture, you all think. This part seems to be a prophecy of the end of the world, when the stars are right. Such prophecies occur a lot toward the end of the Ptolemaic era. That could mean that it is a letter copy with additions of the original to get Ptolemy the Seventh. The Seventh Ptolemy, also called um, the Temple of Jupiter Serapis, then dynastic god of the Ptolemies. It was the site of most of the Alexandrian library. When the stars are right, she who is foremost among the daughters of Meme, she who is Isis, she was a goddess of motherhood and nature, also skilling charms and magic, shall call upon Tot, one of the great Egyptian gods, a moon god, inventor of writing and a god of the calendar. His name in Egyptian is Tehuti, Measurer by his name, that she alone know it, and messenger of those that wait shall come unto her, that they may be united. That would refer to the spell of summoning, but the name is almost certain to have been passed on orally. That's the central secret of a mystery cult. There were secret societies, which taught religious and magical knowledge, often through ritual dramas. Because of the other secrecy taken by initiates, very little of their teachings has survived. The union will mark the dawning of a new age, when the old gods will return, and a servant shall have power over all things. The world will be destroyed, and a new one take its place. Oh, blast that lamp. The world must be going. Anyway, that's as far as I can go for now. I don't want to risk handling the scroll anymore. In the morning, I can begin work on it properly. It'll take months, maybe years. We appreciate what we've got here. Even if we know where it came from, but one thing I am confident of, it isn't a fake. Modern or ancient, the style and script are both too consistent for that. What on earth?
he has not yet served his Bring it to me. I am teacher and messenger, and those that seek I bring wisdom and knowledge. You have sought knowledge, grants me. You shall be my gift to you. You shall know what lies beyond. Come. Yeah, so far it's been like the um, diptologist. Wait. I am worried, sir. We were standing there when we came here. For ten minutes, you have not moved. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right, thank you. Yes, I'm all right, thank you. Where am I? You can't come to Gomez Gulf, sir. How did I get here? Do not tell anyone, but I'm not really a tourist guide. My brother gave me this job, got me this job. A solar disk. How do you know it's a solar disk? We are longing for the Bimbashi. It's out at the moment. Uh, thank you, Gat. My God, Mr. Gretzky. But we had thought you were. What has happened? You look terrible. Please, have a seat in the bar. If you'll be so kind, just for a few minutes while I make arrangements. I've been sent to collect you. Would you come with me, please? Now it's different, as you can see. Well, I'll be... Amy was right. It is you. What happened? Where have you been? I was in the catacombs, I think. At Com Escher Then I came here. Yes, but where we were before that? At the museum. With you and the professor. When was that? Last night, wasn't it? No, Mr. Gretzky. That was three months ago. You've been missing since then. You must be suffering from amnesia. I'd better bring you up to date. You remember I was called away from the museum, I hope. After, well, after we arrested Elitis' woman, I be, we began searching her property to see if we could find any other manuscripts. At their warehouse, they found the body of her customs agent, Yusuf al-Rashid. Seller and phoned me at the museum. I didn't get much out of her, so I left her to stew, stew for a while, and went back to the museum, where I found the professor's body, and you and the scroll missing. I assume at that point that Ari had, had arranged the murder of Al-Rashid, and whoever had done that also came to the museum to recover the scroll. It was a struggle, the professor's art gave out, and since you were had witnessed it, you were, you were taken to be disposed of later. I went back to the station to question Ariad again, but then she had disappeared as well. What, you mean she had jumped bail? No, she put her money to better use. A lavish bribe did the trick, if I catch the man responsible. It wouldn't be the first time someone vanished without tracing this city, but I, am, but I was astonished when you turned up again in one piece. All I can assume is that they couldn't face killing you in cold blood, and a ransom the man would, be, would have been too risky. So eventually they just knock you on the head and dump you in the catacombs. Alive and an arm except for your memory. Even if I did tell him what I can remember, what happened to me, I don't think he'd believe it. Anyway, I put in a report along those lines, and officially that was the end of it. But there was still something that I was happy about. What was that? I had to empty the warehouse safe, and I used the keys which my man got in where he hadn't set. Later on, I was going through the items on al Rashid's body, which included a set of keys. One of them was obviously brand new, and did have a match on Ariadne's set, which had one, she had one which was the same type, but older, and did have a match on his bunch. They were going to find out what, what they fitted, 
was to try them on every lock in the warehouse. Art key and Ariane said didn't fit anywhere. Akhrashid fitted the door in the cellar. It seemed strange that he had a key and she didn't. So I took a closer look at the lock. It was brand new. So we must have changed it. And the art key on her bunch was one of the old ones. That wasn't what hurt me though. We knew that whoever killed Al Rashid broke open the cellar door. But when I was looking at the lock, I saw the paint on it was badly shipped. I could only find an explanation for that, and I didn't like it. The door has been forced from the inside. It had been forced from the inside, everyone, including myself, had assumed that the killers grabbed Al Rashid, kicked the cellar door open, dragged him down to where he screams wouldn't be heard, and killed him. They were in a hurry, they wouldn't have bothered to use the keys. But why would anyone break open the door from the inside? Al Rashid couldn't have done it trying to escape because he was found tied to a chair. Even if you assume that the cellar door was open at first, but someone locked his killers in there, Al Rashid's keys was hanging on his belt all the time. But till that point, we had an it explanation for everything. But even if we couldn't arrest anyone for it, the elitist woman and Al Rashid had been smuggling drugs and manuscripts. It cheated her, so she hired a tux to kill him. It all went badly wrong. So her accomplices had to get her out of jail, and stole the scroll and case to find her getaway, in the process giving the professor a heart attack. I could either leave it that as it stood, an evidence solved but explainable case, or start asking questions to which I had no answer. So I didn't say anything about the lock in my report, but it still worried me. Now we're back in Alexandria. I thought I might be able to help me clear this up. Perhaps a fresh pair of eyes might be all that is needed. Let's go to the warehouse and see if you can spot anything that I didn't. Now it's different. Now it's a different playthrough. We turned this place upside down. Most of the stuff here had drugs hidden in it. They must have got rid of the rest of the material. They had been in the process of parceling up the drugs for sale. Anyway, let's take a look at the cellar. You don't use cases like that in an office to weigh post. Someone's been waiting out drugs. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read this. I already read this. This. You see, they have different. That log doesn't add up. Usually the papers are fine. Together they look like someone is trying to conceal something. That file must set out the arrangements for bringing drugs to Alexandria. Let's save. Drink some water because it's not easy to narrate every bloody thing. <sighs> you have to, to narrate everything. Drink water every now and then because you get a I see what it means. It's been levered open from the inside. Nasty. That must be the chair they're tying him to. That's where the cut rope comes from. I wonder what that pile of ash is. Looks like someone burned some kind of resilience herb or incense. This is a bit better. They dusted for fingerprints. Why didn't they take Ariadne's? 
enough time, I suppose. I want to eliminate her from the inquiry either. If not, if they thought she had hired the tags. Looks like blood stains on the rope. Those look like blood stains on the rope. They indicate that he was alive when it was tied and struggled. All tends to confirm he was killed here, not somewhere else. Then dumped to confuse the police. That looks like the rest of what they tie him up with. There are some rope fibers in the cracks of this slab. That's probably from the large coil of rope. And I can understand why it's down here. Looks of it, Al Rashid cleared everything else out of the cellar and left the rope. I wonder why. What is this place? Some sort of... What is this place? Some sort of temple? There's meant to be no end of tunnels under the city. Classic local stories is the one about the fed pride of Alexandria. Apparently a wedding procession was going down the street, all open under her feet, and she vanished, never to be seen again. There is a corridor back here. It's more of it ahead. Oh, the things that were here disappeared. Remember from the last game? It's not a dead hand, sir. The corridor continues around here. We must be on the right track. But we must also be careful. Whatever killed Al Rashid might come back this way. What is that strange glow ahead? Save. We better keep moving. With somewhere, with somewhere as old as this, it's always dangerous that the whole thing could collapse at any time. to someone called Kamuran Himran. Now where have I heard that name before? That's it! The docks! But what's this doing here? Come on, back to the office. We need to think about this.
before I tell you what was in your notebook, take a look at this file. Now, Dr. Bahar Hermarsan, the immediate cause of death was usually assumed to be acute trauma from two penetrating bullet wounds to the upper chest, but autopsy examination caused these to be revised. The primary cause of death was, in fact, heart failure due to ruptured acute myocardial infarct. Approximate case of death, cause of death, unknown cardiovascular stimulant, method of ingestion also unknown, but possibly connected with minor lesion in regional of sternum. Three, squamous area of skin on back, shoulders, forearms, legs, and head were not a contributory, contributory cause of death and were probably due to a psychiatric condition. An excessively pointed dentition of the subject could have been due to filing of the teeth, extensively practiced by some Aboriginal peoples, or per defects. Four, anomalous slit purple eye scribes but witnesses were not observed at autopsy due to the post-mortem relaxation of the eye muscles. Near this, no point three above had been confirmed by further examination of the body, as the body was buried immediately after autopsy. Recording the records came into Alexandria on SS Dacia. You remember incident where you when he was barking? The stabbing on the dock side. Oh, yes. You know, it's only the last three months I don't remember. That letter you read just now was about the autopsy report on the killer. The notebook belonged to the victim, Kamuran Himran. According to his passport, he was a Turkish teacher. But judging from his notebook, he was obsessed with the study of Halkim. And while and with reconstructing a lost masterwork, the Book of the Serpent Staff. Biblion Kayuru Kayon. The scroll at the museum. Hi, that's right. Imran seems to have only discovered fragments of it. Second or even third end copies. But we know that the original has survived. And when Professor translated some of it, he spoke of a hybrid race. Half human, half serpent. I call that a pretty fair description of whatever killed Imran. It seems amazing that nobody has come across them before but he could hide an army that lambered that we discovered. And maybe many of them could pass for human. The question is, why did they kill Imran? Well, his clothes were uh, in that temple. Maybe he then inadvertently committed sacrilege and suffered that penalty because of it. It all starts to make a strange sort of sense. We know that Imran was by manuscripts and that Ariyan and Al-Rashid were selling them. If Al Rashid was cutting them from the temple, which seems likely, then he may have taken Imran there and came back later himself to steal the golden sarcophagus that the elitist woman had when I arrested her. The scroll in it, the Book of the Serpent's Staff, seems to be their secret text. They must have followed Al Rashid's trail back to the warehouse, broken out, broken out of the cellar and captured him, used drugs and poison to find out what he had done with the scroll finally caught up with it at the museum. That wouldn't be too hard. There was plenty of gossip about what happened in at the hotel, and I made no secret of where I was going. The shock of seeing them was too much for the professor, but they took you back with them, and held you down there until you managed to escape. Should I tell what really happened to the museum? That's not what happened at the museum. After you left, the professor continued translating scroll for a while. Then suddenly, I won't be narrating this part, as it repeated, the flashback. Huh. 
Next thing I remember, or rather want to remember, I was standing in the catacombs at Coma Shagalfa. Then I discovered that three months had passed, but I've been hallucinating. We know that they used drugs on Al-Hashid. They probably used them on you at the museum. And during the three months that they held you, that would account for the amnesia as well. From all that's been going on lately, and the importance they attached to getting the scroll and case back, I say they were preparing for some great ceremony, perhaps even for their millennium, and they may have intended to use you as a sacrifice. If only we knew precisely when it was going to be. Where does the, f the lens fit in? The fragments of the book that Imran had managed to trace, mostly it seems as patches in the other's manuscripts, contain strands for making something called the Eye of Thought, which must be that lens. It was made and then offered to the sun without light. It show when the stars are right for some great transformation. Sounds as if it's some sort of ritual then. I ritual item used to decide when the ceremony when the ceremony takes place. If so, it might tell us when it's called plan to hold their great ceremony. But how? I can't see anything written on it. According to his notebook, he still had to complete the final part of the ritual. Offering to the lightless sun, or whatever the mumbo jumbo was. Maybe there was something in the temple that he needed. Perhaps they have to shine a light through the lenses here inscription. It's worth a try anyway. Come on, let's go. The lens might be the key. If only we would work out what it means to offer it to the lightless sun. I'm gonna save again. solar disk. Look, there is one in the temple above the spirit door. That's the sun which gives no light. Hmm, looks like it contains more of the incense in the cellar that they're using on al Rashid. Spirit door. Very different looking from the one in the museum. But it might be just as dangerous. Solar disk. What did the notebook say? Must be offered to the sun without light. Works. stars are right. That must mean the ceremony could happen any time now. The professor translates more of the scroll. He said that when the stars were right, she who is Isis, that must be their high priestess, would use a spell of summoning to call Thoth. That would be their great ceremony. But if we destroyed the scroll, she couldn't use the spell. It's a good idea. But the scroll case we want isn't down here. When it is, the cult will be here as well. How did we get the scroll? How do we get scroll without meeting the same fate as Imran? The box by the altar holds various sorts of incense. Bring the one they use on al Rashid in the cellar. If I mix a generous quantity of that in with the rest, they'll get a nasty surprise when they put it on the braziers and light it. That would give us a chance to run in and seize the scroll. If we hold our breath quickly then. Put some in all the brazers. Right, now that's done. Let's wait at the back of the cavern and see how long it is before they turn up. Better hope that incest does his job. That lot down there will tear us limb from limb. Are you ready? Let's go. Burn the scroll, Gretzky.
Well, I think we've seen the last of them, whoever they were. Just as well, because I won't fancy making an official report on all this. In any case, who would you believe it? And the old evidence is buried now. But did you see what happened when I burned the scroll? Ugh, oh, you've been reading too much writer Haggard, Mr. Gretzky. I think we must have caught a whiff of the incense ourselves. Maybe. But how did he know what I saw? And when I hadn't told him? And there's another one ended.